Hi, everybody. Lori here from My Favorite Things. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a couple of fun projects to share with you featuring more February release goodies, starting with this raccoon cutie. As soon as I saw it, soon as I laid eyes on it, I just knew I had to make a shape card similar to the one I did last month with the friendly fox. But the raccoon cutie doesn't come with the whole body head thing all together in one. The body and the head are separate. So I'm going to take the friendly fox from last month and use that to make my shape card base. And then I'll just pop on the raccoon head and nobody will know the diff. Okay, so here's how I make my shape card. I did this last month, so you might remember. Got a little white card base here and I hang the top off the edge so that hinge stays intact. Gonna run this through the old Gemini Junior and you'll see how easy this comes together. And now my friendly fox is gonna have a raccoon cutie to pal around with. They look so adorable when you put them side by side. So there is the shape card base. Now I'm gonna uh, die cut all the raccoon cutie body parts using various colors of solid color cardstock. I've got some craft, some cream, a little pink for the inner ear. If you didn't wanna use a bunch of different colors of cardstock, you could die cut the whole thing with white cardstock and color it with ink blending. You could also color it with Copic markers. I've done that. So I trimmed off the head from the fox so I could pop on the raccoon head. Now I'm gonna add a bit of shading with ink blending. As you can see my friendly fox there over on the right from last month, I did some shading with ink blending. I wanted to kind of keep it consistent with the raccoon. So I pulled out some vintage photo Distress Oxide and add a little bit of shading here and there. And I'm gonna adhere all these pieces onto the card base. So I don't know if My Favorite Things is gonna continue to release more and more of these cutie patootie little animals. I certainly wouldn't be mad about it because if they did, you bet your bottom dollar, I'm gonna make a shape card with each and every one of them until I have a whole critter family. And then when I run out of room, I'll just string them on a garland and hang them on my window because I just like looking at them. They bring joy to my heart looking at these animals, especially when you add a rosy cheek. I mean, forget about it. I've got my little detail blending brush and some sponge sugar makes the perfect subtle rosy cheek. Now I'm adding all the rest of the parts using glossy accents. We actually used to have some raccoon cuties that would uh, come visit us now and again, come right up on our porch, hop right up on the bench and tap on the front window until you would come and then it would just have a staring contest with the kids because it was begging for food. When we had our cat Bella, she was an outdoor cat and the kids every once in a while would put a little bowl of food, cat food on the front porch for the cat, which was honestly a really bad idea because of course it drew in the little raccoon cuties, but uh, the raccoon would come and see that the cat food was gone and it would tap on the window just to let you know, hey, refill the bowl. Uh, but, you know, we never actually got to touch the raccoons. It was probably a good thing. But it would be friendly. Yes, friendly indeed. And, I mean, look at this little raccoon cutie shape card. Can you stand it? And then when you put it with the fox, they're so happy together. And now we're moving on to the second card. Going to make a really fun birthday card. Starting with the background, I have a panel of Nina Solaroid cardstock. And I'm ink blending some Distress Oxide inks in Worn Lipstick, Spice Marmalade, and Squeeze Lemonade. And then once I lay down that little base of subtle color, I'm going to come in with the card-sized confetti stencils. You can see those on the right. But before I add the stencils, I wanted to lay down a little bit of color first. So once I get those three colors kind of blended seamlessly, it doesn't have to be perfect, because the confetti kind of hides any imperfections. Now I laid the first stencil down and I'm using the same colors, just going over it with more of a heavy hand to get more vibrancy. So it's like same color, tone on tone is what this would be. Then I'm gonna lay on the second stencil and this time I'm gonna go in with white pigment ink. And I went over this quite a bit with the white pigment ink to make sure that I could get as vibrant of white confetti dots as I could. And I love how it turned out. Now I'm gonna die cut the Happy Birthday Blend Dynamics right into that ink blended panel. And I'm gonna stamp the sentiment on this white card base. So instead of, you know, a lot of times you stamp your sentiment and you pop it up, this time I'm doing more of a recessed look 
So it's like a reverse. I'm lining up the letters where they should go from the Happy Birthday Blend stamp set. Then I'll remove that panel, get it out of the way, and stamp my sentiment. This Happy Birthday Blend stamp set is so cool. It's kind of like a two-part. So you stamp some of the letters, and I'm using two different inks to get like a two-tone effect. It stamps some of the letters, and then you put the other letters on, and they kind of overlap the existing letters. And it looks... Phenomenal. As soon as I saw it, I was like in love. This time I'm stamping with orange and yellow. And when that overlaps with the pink and the red, it's just bomb diggity bomb. And then I'll pop up my ink blended panel. And not that you needed to add anything else because you don't. But in life, if you can kick it up a notch, you always should. So I've got this sweet little penguin from the Party Penguin stamp set, which I already die cut the pieces first. I noticed with these penguins, it's actually easier if you die cut it first. That way you know where to line up the feet and the, what do you call that? Is that a, a beak on a penguin? And then of course I couldn't resist a balloon and a party hat. I took some silver thread. This is how I do this. It's very fancy schmancy. I tie on some silver thread in a knot and then I simply just string it behind the penguin's wing. Do you call that a penguin wing? And that is all there is to it. It's simple, it's festive, it's happy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.